first stage of uh, getting some more weathering down on the Beast Killer is I'm going to add some various shades of brown and flat earths and car keys just to the the running gear underneath and I've already started underneath the hull as you can see so I'm just going to slowly build up some dried earth and dirt effects again going fairly light as we go up the uh, the front of the hull. This is before I put the whitewash on. I want to add that layer before the whitewash so you can see it when I take the whitewash off. And also on this back plate this is going to get a lot of uh, a lot of accumulation of different tones. So I'll just get stuck into that now. So I've added a little bit of flat earth to the car key just to get a little bit more of the red soil effect there. Again just light layers, I'll just show you how I do the back here and then I'll move on. So I need to make this fairly subtle, I don't want to overpower it. And while, while I'm at it, I'll do underneath the fenders here because this is going to have a few logs sitting there. And I just want to, particularly at the back panels there, I'll just turn that a little bit so you can see. So it's quite red at the moment. I'm going to go over that with a light buff and I think that'll, that'll bring out the tones a little bit better. So the dark layer I'm going to put mainly underneath the uh, undercarriage, whatever you want to call that, underneath the uh, the hull is some black green, Tamiya XF27, and I've put some down on this side already. Okay, you can see it's just in the shadows there of the running gear. I'll turn this around, and that's it without. So I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow there. Now I know most of this is going to get covered up by pigments, but at least I get the right tones, hopefully, for when all that mud goes down. I'll finish that later, but I'll show you the back here. So what I want to do is just put a light layer of the dark stuff. I think that's alright. I'm just going to do one more little layer and then we'll go around to the front and do a similar here because the mud's going to get kicked up underneath here and I just want some of this to show through when I put the whitewash on. Alright, it's getting darker but I want to get a little bit more in there so I've just added a touch or two of flat black and I'm just going to hit some of the more shadows, particularly underneath. And then hopefully I'll lock that in with a matte coat and we can get some whitewash on. So I'm getting a lot bigger shadows there in the corners and that's what I want with this mix. Excuse the kids playing in the background. It's the last day of the Easter holidays. I thought I could get something done. Okay. Okay. 
and I actually want splatter. So this is actually a fairly thick mix. So I'm just hitting. The last layer I'm going to put down is counterintuitive. It's the lightest one, but I just want to uh, sort of knock back some of the stuff that's gone too dark. Just some buff XF57, very lightly thinned. And actually I can use that and put that over a lot of the model. So I'll just apply some of that now. I'm just going to hit my stowage first, give them a light dusting. So I'm spraying that from a quite a way away. Just try to give it a little bit of dust, not too much. All right, so on the back panel there, Just barely see that effect. You can just see that. All right, I'm just, but this is mainly for the front, so I'll just do the front now. top plate here so with a flat coat over the um, pre shading of dirt and mud effects that I've done on the front wall over the whole vehicle just gonna add some chipping fluid for the front because we're gonna do some whitewash and my intention for the whitewash the reference photo I've got I'll try to put a picture up here if I can excuse the dirty finger is um it was only really applied on the barrel and the mantlet and the whole gun cover with maybe a little bit still on the front plate here probably all being worn off by the crew but the rest of the vehicle is still in its original color so it was sort of a slapdash sort of thing and I think it'll look really good putting that white at the front high contrast so Let's just get straight into it. I've got some chipping fluid in the airbrush and I should put some gloves on but I'll just touch <laughs> I'll touch the vehicle with the, the sides there so let's go. Now I'll put the chipping fluid on places where I don't intend uh, to actually whitewash just in case I get some overspray so and this will take two or three coats, so I'll let that dry and hit it again in a minute. Time to put the whitewash on, and you might be thinking, well, why have I got a tin of buff paint? Well, I need to make it, the whitewash isn't exactly completely white. I'm going to make it a bit dirty first. And it's going to be thinned with my usual X20A, because uh, this stuff's not very strong. So let's just put the first layer on, and then I'm actually going to put white over the top. So hopefully this works. Now I'm going to map on the straight white over the top of that dirty buffy white mix and uh, yeah, see how we go. Time to wear down this whitewash a fair bit and I've got my favorite bristle brush got a piece of paper towel there and a little bit of water and this will come off in sheets because of the uh, the way I've applied it with that X20A so uh, I'm just gonna very lightly get to it so normally I would flood when you're chipping you'd flood the surface with water but I know with the X20A that this stuff is extremely brittle and this white will come off very quickly. Famous last words, as my dog chases a car down the street. It's coming off there, off that vision port. That's the effect I want. You know, boots going over the top of it and stuff. I'm gonna try to scratch this away without it make it look like I'm using a big brush to scratch it away. 
So the way to do that is just to change your angles and sometimes use a different tool. So I might use, I might grab a smaller brush. But I'm getting that effect. See how it's starting to come off on the corners there? And this is just damp. It's, um, yeah, so don't be afraid of doing white wash because when you do it this way with a matte coat to seal in your lower paint and with the X20A and you thin it a fair bit, it's, um, it, it'll come off in chunks. In fact, I'll show you, I reckon this barrel, stuff on the barrel will come off very quickly. I'm just looking at the reference photo on my other computer and it's got big streaks on it, so it must have gone through. Yeah, there it goes. Can you see that? I'll do another one here. It must have gone through some foliage and it's just ripped off the whitewash. So that's coming off really nicely there. And of course, you've got to do it at the where it's protruded a bit. You'll know that the chippings, the chipping fluid's activating, you'll see a little bit of uh, almost like soap detergent type of liquid effect on the on the surface. Now that's coming back really nicely, some really nice chips. It's going to continue this sort of lateral streak that I can see. I'm just checking my camera, I'm not my camera, my computer over the top of the camera there. You see those bubbles and foam coming up, that's that it's getting activated. So if I just drag that across, I should get, there we go, lots of chippies. All right, I'll keep doing this. So I think I've got it where I basically want it, but I want to add another layer and that's just using scratches. Uh, and I like to use my, just my Tamiya paint stirring stick for that, just to lightly scratch along the edge there. Hopefully it'll come up. If I just scratch away and we get, yeah, there we go especially on these sort of exposed areas. So we get some really nice long chipping effects there. It should work nicely on this mantlet cover, which I've only, uh, I haven't gone completely nuts on, but I reckon it could do with a bit more scratching. So you see how that just comes straight off. And also just use the edge of the of the stirring stick just to pile over the top of any exposed rivets and bolt heads. There we go, getting some nice scratches now. And then especially down in here, I want to replicate how the crew get on and off and there might be branches getting stuck in there. So we've got little scratches instead of just using the chipping. So we've got two of those tiny scratches and then on the fender and on the vision plate more little scratches and then I'm going to try to do just a couple of little turns this way I'm going to do something a bit different with the tracks and the wheels as you can see I've glued them on or apart from one that just fell off I just put a blue tack on it I'm going to do something a bit different here I've uh, primed these in a combo of Steinal Res red and their metal to give a sort of a rusty metal gun metal sort of finish and you could probably leave it like that or um yeah do whatever and excuse the noise upstairs the kids are still on holiday and they're running around like uh, headless chooks what i'm going to do is put a, a layer of uh, chipping fluid on this and then i'm going to paint the green on the the wheels and the sprockets and what have you and also paint a sort of a mottled sort of greeny black brown reddish sort of mix over the top of this metal effect and then I'll chip it back and see if we get a really nice quick and easy um, you know dirty finish for the running gear I mean on top of that I'm going to add mud effects and so forth but I'm just going to do this and see what happens first I'm going to come down with a very light mix of khaki and buff to do some dried up dirt inside the uh, inside the links there so let's give this a go So you can see I'm putting it on the inside of those track links. So I'll also do it on the on the interior. And then I'm going to come back over this with some uh, quite darker bits. Now I'm coming in with a much darker mix. I've just added some black and some black green to that khaki mix. And I'm going to hit the uh, on the outside and in the crevices of all these all these track links.
And on the inside here, I want to get inside where the mud would stay. So we're getting a nice sort of contrast there, but most of that will disappear. And then I'm just randomly blotching over. Looking a bit better now. Time to paint the Forbio green on the wheels and the sprocket. My formula for this is simple. Three of this, three of this, and one of that. It's what I used on the uh, the upper hull, so I'll use it for the lower. And spoiler alert, I've already painted that side. So let's just paint the other side. Uh, I'm not worried too much about overspray, because with the hairspray chipping, this should all come off here, in theory. I've chipped to this side, and as you can tell, in comparison to the other side that hasn't been done, yeah, you can get some really nice worn effects, particularly on that sprocket there. And uh, yeah, so you can get the edge of the wheels really nicely in those hubs. I'll just turn that over, and a similar sort of a worn of effect on the back there. So that's that's working really well. I'm going to go overboard because I will be applying mud to these. So I'll just do these ones for you live. So I just get my bristle brush. Dip in the water, take most of it off, and I'm just basically going over, get it in camera, Chris, getting it over there. I might flood it a little bit more. Just got to be careful with these Tamiya paints because they can be quite sensitive. I'm actually being very conservative here. So first I'll go and take the paint off the teeth. I think that's coming away. Yep, it's coming away. I just got to check in the light. And then getting into these hubs here, I could use my metal stirring stick, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the top of that hub, just as I stab it. Yep, stuff's coming off. There we go. So it's pretty simple. I'll zoom in so you can see even better. Alright, so we've got a nice, very effectively chipped hub. We can go even further with that if you want to add highlights to the teeth, and I probably will. We can do that. Let's go onto these road wheels. So I'm just basically letting the brush get in there. And yep, you can already see stuff coming off. See on the front of that hub there. Okay, so we got a nice worn effect. And that's it. I'll just move along and keep doing the rest of these. And after that's all done, I'll lock it all in with a matte coat. And we can get finally to putting the tracks on the vehicle and finishing it off.